There we go. Um, hi, um, I'm here to talk about um, basically making the NTCRS work in a regional area um, for us. So, um, where are we? There we go. Um, so, that's what we're going to cover this morning. A bit about ReRoc. Um, they're the member councils of um, ReRoc, Bland, Coolum, and Kutamandra, Gundagai. You can see them. Population 125,000, covering an area of 42,000 square kilometres. We are about the size of the Netherlands, except the Netherlands has 15 million people and we have 125,000 or 2.9 people per square kilometre. Um, it's, it's a challenge and, um, you know, trying to find um, solutions that give people equitable, reasonable access to opportunities to dispose of their waste properly and to recycle is a constant challenge. Um, we have 11 community recycling centres in our region. So our problem, well our problem was the legislation. <laughs> I mean it's great that we got product, this you know, product, product responsibility in legislation in and we participated quite a lot in all the consultations that went with you know, with the introduction of the NTCRS and constantly for us was this concern that we did not think that people were going to put um, put their um, old computers and televisions in the car and drive 100, 200 kilometres to dispose of it properly. Um, in the legislation and those of you in regional areas would be more than aware of this as long as you have a service within 150 kilometres of, of you, you are considered to be serviced by the legislation. Okay. So, you know, in our region, Wagga Wagga needed to have a service because it has over 63,000 people in it. But the rest of the councils that we serviced were in that 150 kilometre zone. And you know, knowing the communities that we had, we were pretty sure that most of them weren't going to sit in the car for three hours to bring a television to Wagga. So what we had to do was to start and think, well, how can we make this work for us? And for work for us, at the time, it doesn't exist anymore, thank you to the New South Wales State Government for all the local government mergers, but at the time when, this started in 20, when we started our our solution in 2012, we had the largest inland city in New South Wales, which we still have, Wagga Wagga, and we had the smallest one in the state, Urana, with a thousand people. So you have to come up with a solution that's going to work in Wagga and it's going to work in Urana, which is, you know, a little bit of a challenge. On top of that, what we wanted to do was we wanted to ensure that the supported employment program that we had running in Wagga that had invested literally millions of dollars into um, recycling e-waste was able to continue to do that and some of you would be familiar with the number of supported employment programs that actually weren't able to sustain themselves post NTCRS and we wanted to try and make sure that whatever we did we were feeding product into Courage on Recyclers so that we could continue that sort of local employment and, and keep their um, enterprise ticking over. So we worked quite closely with them. So our challenge was to be really to be proactive. We knew we had a problem. We read the legislation. We knew what was going on. When this started, and it's hard for some of us probably to remember this, but when we started, there was all this legacy waste, and the target was really, really low. Do you remember? So we had piles of legacy waste that we wanted to get rid of, and they only had to get rid of a little teeny tiny bit. And so everybody was really worried, all the administrators, the approved administrators were really worried that you know, they were going to have all of this waste and they were going to exceed their targets and they weren't going to get paid and it was just going to be a complete, complete disaster, chaos, chaos. So what we wanted to do was come up with something that was you know, going to make it easy for the approved administrators to start, we going to, was going to respond to the concerns, the commercial concerns that they had and that you know, it was going to give our people an accessible, equitable arrangement that's going to work. So we wanted to drive that kind of solution and we opened negotiations with a couple of approved suppliers at the time and what we said was, you know, this is what we're going to do for you. Okay, we've got this problem, we've got a problem with distance. 
Okay? We're going to work out the logistics. We're going to take care of the transport. We want to run a hub and spoke arrangement. We want you to contribute to the cost of doing that. We're going to do the administration around that. You know, but we want something in Urana and we want something in West Wyong and we want something in Wagga. Um, and the other thing that we said is, and if you have too much product, we're happy to turn the tap off. All you have to do is pick the phone up tell us that you're over your quota and we will tell our councils to hold off. Okay. So we, we ran negotiations for a period of time and um, we, we knew you know, the issues that we had. Um, we wanted to make sure Courageon was included so we, we you said you know, and you need to process locally. However, I have to be honest and say that we also said if push comes to shove, our councils finish first. So we want to do this, we want to have these local jobs, but primarily we want to service into our councils. Um, and when we started this in 2012, um, our team, when we finally found what we were going to do, we, we, our team included not MRI, but DHL, who most of you would know was taken over by their, their role as an administrator was taken over by MRI. So we came up with a solution whereby, um, whereby we did the logistics around moving the e-waste. Um, DHL and our MRI um, contribute towards the cost of it and it actually gets processed um, locally in Wagga Wagga with Karajong Recyclers and of course our participating councils do their bit to make that happen as well. So, working together. REOC has uh, an agreement with MRI PSO, clearly setting out the obligations of what each party is going to do. This is what we'll do, this is what you'll do, this is what you'll pay, this is what we'll pay. Um, then what we did was we made a MOU with each of the participating councils and that reflects what our agreement is with, um, with um, MRI PSO, we really struck some really interesting problems very early in the peak around um, maintaining the Australian standard for storage at the landfills. That created some um, really interesting issues for us. Um, but I think we've resolved all of those and the introduction of the CRCs has made life considerably better. We, and I'll show you some pictures in a minute, but we decided we ended up um, using IVCs, which really helped us with the whole storage issue. So we've got an arrangement in place with our member councils. It includes their obligations related to signage, the collection use, the staffing, the compliance, all of those kinds of things. And then MRI has an agreement with current recyclers. Mark, did you want to talk to that agreement or not? No, it's okay. And they've got a contractual arrangement with current young recyclers who take the waste. Um, process it and do whatever needs to be there done there. Then what we do is, and, and this works quite well for MRI PSO, is we bill them once a quarter for what's collected, what, what we collect, and then they um, they pay us. So what are, who does what? Um, so MRI contributes to the cost of the transport and promotion. We have a per tonnage arrangement in place to make that happen. We, they meet the recycling costs. It does say it's 10% there. Mm, yeah, look, that's a bit generous. We have aimed for five. If it's 10%, somebody's ringing me up. We've never gotten there, although I do have had to have words every now and again with the councils. I think you know one of the things that works for MRI and for Currajong is that they make one phone call and say, I've got a problem with contamination, and then, I, then we go out and, and deal with that. Uh, MRI audits the sites, the collection sites annually. Um, they provide the collection reports on the sites and they promote us on drop zone. re we co coordinate the 11 sites that we've got. We do common signage, that's Ernie e-waste. Um, we organise all the transport to do the pickups and the deliveries to the recycler. We do the local promotion and we meet the um, meets recycling costs for non-scheme waste. Well, we don't actually do that, we make the councils. We tell them if you do put it in there, you pay for it. 
Um, and then our agreement actually stipulates that the waste will go to Currajong unless there's a really big problem. So we've got that built in. For, for Currajong to keep um, operating, they need a, a minimum tonnage a month and we make sure that that go, gets to them so that they can keep ticking over and employing these people, which is really important. And I thought I would show you the TV ad. Oh, you can't... No, it says it can't, can't find the internet. <laughs> I did say it was there. Not so worry. We will keep moving on. Um, so we have a very cool ad, and you can see it on YouTube if you go re-rock e-waste ad. Um, so we do all the promotions right across the region. It covers all the 11 sites. The challenges that we've had. So distance. Obviously, and anybody working in a regional area with waste knows that distance is a problem. Transporting air. Um, we've had a number of discussions with our councils about packing the IBC so we don't transport air. We get paid on a per tonne basis, but our transporter is charging us on the basis of the IBCs he's got to put there. So once the truck's full, it's full. And if it's full of half-empty IBCs, that's not really his problem. It's mine. So we've had words about that around the um, on-site management, trying to get that, you know, everybody doing the, exactly the right thing and organising collection units. We had, and you would be familiar with this kind of problem, what do you do? Do you get one big shipping container and you move it once every six months or do you get something else that you're just moving, you know, every month and you're always ringing up somebody? what's going to be the most effective way of doing it. So we weighed all those things up, got quotes for shipping containers, as you do, got quotes for second-hand shipping containers, then realised we didn't actually have a transporter that was going to be viable to go around picking these shipping containers up. And then Karajong said, we've got nowhere to put the shipping containers when you bring them. So the shipping container idea bit the dust, you know, reasonable quick. But we do do this IBC thing and they've been really good. And they're also good because we have to get a continuous supply of product into Currajog. So it means we can do shorter runs. It also meant when we began that um, none of my councils had forklifts. And that's a real dilemma. So, um, so the, the advent of the CRC was great because we made sure when we built the CRC, we put in forklifts. So the change that that made to the operation of the whole thing was just amazing. Um, also, it really helped us with the whole storage and management process as well. Um, the setup, and you can see how it looks. They're the standard signs that everybody has, and the drop zones are everywhere you go. It mirrors what we do when we do the television advertising. Um, up here are the, um, up in the right hand corner, they're the IBC stacks at Currajong, so it's a great storage. They can have a huge shed, they can stack all the IBCs. And then that's, you can see that's a CRC with the signage on it as well. So it integrates really well with our CRCs. Some of our ongoing issues are around contamination. New council staff can be a bit of an issue for us because they're not quite sure. Coordinating staff, we've got a bit of an IBC shortage. Um, and that causes, um, but we're working with um, MRI PSO to resolve that problem. Um, but other than that, it's worked pretty well. The audits that our MRI do for us are great um, because they um, ensure that, you know, the councils tell you they're doing stuff, but sometimes they're not really doing what they tell you. And then the audit rings and says, I was at this council and I said, and when do you ring up to get these things picked up? And they said, we don't, we just toss it in the hole. And we went, okay, so we got a bit of a communication breakdown there that we didn't know was happening. And when I rang the director of the council, he went, what? And I went, they're tossing it in the hole, did you know that? And he went, mm, no. And so, you know, so it's great to have the audit because you all often think everything is working perfectly and then you find it's not. And because I have a co-presenter here, <laughs> Mark is going to talk to you to finish up on the benefits. Yep. Yeah, so ReRock have had a service provided to them since 2012, which was the start of the scheme. First, as Julie said, via DHL and then MRI once we took over their arrangement. 
Um, and one of the great things about this is that it's meant that even the smallest regions have been able to get direct access to the scheme, which they would not be able to do on their own right simply because of the low volumes and high transport costs. Um, it's also using local people to coordinate the service via admin, transport and marketing. Um, and by grouping all of that and putting some of the emphasis for that onto ReRock, it's meant that we're able to keep it low cost, which means we're able to provide more money back to cover the transport, which, so we are able to cover the majority of the transport costs for this scheme, uh, this service, sorry. And then it also means for us low admin because we send one invoice to one entity rather than having to send it to each of the smaller regions. And then we report back to the one entity and we're able to group our promotion and marketing by providing that or helping to develop that with one spot and then that gets pushed out to all of them. Which means that it's not just one, not just Wagga getting all the promotion, once one gets promotion, they all get it together. Um, it's a flexible, robust, and it means that it's going to the local recycler in this case, um, promoting local jobs and local revenue and keeping the money for that that service is providing is staying in that community. Um, but. MRI, we sort of pride ourselves on being solution developers. So whilst this is a perfect, well, we think perfect, for ReRock, it may not be exactly what is right for another group of councils. So we work with councils and regions to develop what is best for them. It may be that an on-call solution is best for you, and nine times out of ten in the regions that is the case. But in Canberra, so to, for example, we have a scheduled collection because we're pretty much guaranteed they're going to get 10 tonne a week. And it's having worked with that region for a long time, we've got the schedule worked out pretty well. So we're flexible with that. We can also advise on whether or not bulk bins are going to work, whether um, shipping containers are going to be your best bet, or uh, IBCs and bulk bins, hook, hook lift bins are often used as well. Um, and it's probably of significant note to the Victorian regions as well, given that your e-waste ban is coming in on the 1st of July. Um, that's about it from me on that bit. I'll just now going to give you a bit more of a shameless plug on MRI, just quickly. Yep, there's our contacts if you want to look for more information. But yeah, MRI, we, as well as doing the product stewardship, we're also one of the largest battery recyclers in Australia for non-lead acid batteries. Um, we're an Australian-owned company that has been around since 1980. And we have national footprint. We have our own facilities in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Canberra. And then we have a network of partners, including several social enterprises throughout the country, which gives us a truly national footprint. Um, and whilst the NTCRS helps us to cover the costs of televisions and computers, we have the philosophy that if it plugs in or has a battery, we'll find a way to recycle it. And yeah, that's it for me. Thank you.